patients that have chronic fatigue in me often experience a considerable amount of mental fatigue as well as physical fatigue. In fact, for many of the patients, it is the mental fatigue that actually bothers them more than the physical fatigue. So there is a question of how is the mental fatigue different from the physical fatigue? And the answer is that the brain is a different structure in terms of the way it uses energy. So while your skeletal muscles can basically you lose their oxygen oxygenation for a period of time, they, they can actually do that, lose the oxygenation, and not really die or, or have serious consequences. The brain is very different than that. So if the brain loses its blood flow for even a short period of time, bad things begin to happen very quickly. So the energetics, the way energy is actually used in the brain, it needs to be protected even more than the energy in your skeletal muscles and other tissues in your body. For that reason, the fatigue system in the brain is different than the fatigue system in the rest of your body. The way it's different, however, has really not been investigated thoroughly uh, by m many laboratories. Uh, so we don't really know enough about that to really make a lot of, uh, give you a lot of answers about that at this time. The control of the blood flow in the skeletal muscles is different than that in the brain. So the brain, because it, it needs to be protected more than other tissues in the body, because it, it uses so much energy, it, there's a, a very different way of regulating the blood flow in the brain. So remember, I, I actually already told in previous webinars that, in fact, the skeletal muscle uh, increases its blood flow dramatically when you exercise. The, the brain, on the other hand, is actually already using as much blood flow as it can, as can be generated. The brain is protected in, in the sense that the body always wants to make sure the brain first has enough blood flow and the heart has enough blood flow, then it worries about the rest of the body. And for that reason, the, the way that the blood flow works in the brain when you actually use parts of your brain is different than what happens when you begin to use your skeletal muscles. So in the brain, when you start to focus and use one part of your brain more than the other part of your brain, what happens is that the, when those neurons in that part of your brain begin to fire, that actually causes the blood flow to be increased in that region of the brain that's actually being used at that time. So it, in order to do that, since it, it already is, use, is using all the blood it can, what happens is that you actually divert the blood flow away from other parts of your brain and then divert that blood to the part of the brain you're actually working with at the time. We believe that the mechanism by which that happens, the diversion of the blood, blood flow to that part of your brain, is actually the same signal, same sort of signal at least, that's occurring in skeletal muscle when you start to use it. That in fact it is those same receptors, the, the acid, acid sensing ion channels, the, the re receptors that are detecting the metabolites, that are actually responsible for that. In your skeletal muscle, they cause the increase of blood flow in your muscle. In the brain, we believe that in fact you're increasing those same signals are being used to increase the blood flow in the area of brain you're actually using. At the same time, we also believe that that increase in signaling is also going to other parts of the brain, <laughs> and pretty much the same parts of the brain that are involved in the fatigue you feel from skeletal muscles. And that signal is telling you, hey, I'm mentally tired, and I shouldn't use this part of my brain anymore. As a result of that, I should quit focusing on what I'm doing and let another part of my brain take over. And that's very important because remember that in the brain, since you're, you're now diverting blood flow and you have to have blood flow to your brain at all times, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't divert the, the blood flow away from the parts of your brain's <laughs> brain for very long or with serious uh, difficulties could occur. So we believe that the brain is even more sensitive than your muscles are to this sort of sensation of fatigue. And for that reason, you have a very strong protective system that, that causes you to shift your attention to other parts of your brain pretty quickly when you begin to feel that sensation of mental fatigue.
there are similarities between the control of blood flow in the brain and that of other tissues, and, and particularly the one we've most studied is skeletal muscle. So we know that when you begin to use a, your, your brain or your skeletal muscles, you actually send the signals of fatigue to your brain, and when you do that, that sends signals to your autonomic nervous system to increase the blood flow to your skeletal muscle. Uh, for the brain, again, uh, it's similar, that we believe there that it, since you can't actually divert it to, uh, too far, you, you can't actually take it, uh, you can actually take it away from your skeletal muscle for your brain, uh, but you can't increase your blood flow any more than it's already increased in the brain. So what you do is you divert blood flow from one of your area of your brain to another, rather than actually turning it off and on like you do with the, the muscle. But it's similar, it's a similar method. Uh, and you're actually using the same receptors, we believe, that are detecting the same sorts of metabolites in your brain that you have in your skeletal muscle. So the si similarities are pretty profound, but at the same time, uh, the brain is much more protected in terms of overall blood flow than the skeletal muscle, which can vary its blood flow uh, up to 100 times. Uh, the amount of blood flow change you can make in the brain is far less than that uh, to, to one area of the brain versus another. There have been a number of studies that have shown that there are alterations in the brains of, of uh, chronic fatigue uh, ME patients in that the global blood flow is actually decreased in, in those patients. And the question is, why should that happen? So I've already talked about the fact that the autonomic nervous system is intimately involved in the fatigue that people do uh, feel. Uh, the, if the autonomic nervous system is not working properly, it cannot engage the proper flow of, of blood in anywhere in the body. And we believe that's actually the reason that the blood flow is abnormally decreased in patients with chronic fatigue fibromyalgia, even though it should, if anything, there should be an attempt to increase it. And as I said before, the brain is pretty much using all of its blood flow all, all the time anyway. So it's actually possible that the reason that the blood flow is decreased in the brain is because the overall blood flow in the rest of the body is also dysregulated. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube. Tweet naar @mecvsvereniging of mail naar wvp@me-cvsvereniging.nl. Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chatsessies.